The thing about the world is it can go to anybody. Like, you never know what's going to happen. Italy, a country full of world history, culture, and art. Equally pivotal are Italy's contribution to the world of sport. It's a win for Italy now, surely. Samuel Cuffour is absolutely inconsolable. IFMA uh, well, is the World Federation, it's been established by Ted Longshore many, many years ago. I don't quite know the, the particulars there, but uh, they run, uh, at least in a 1.8 scale off-road, world championships every two years. They rotate between the, the different block, blocks in FEMCA, for example, is Asia, FAMAR is South America, EFRA is Europe, and ROAR is the United States of North America. Italy, having a proud racing heritage, plays host to the IFMAR 8 scale Nitro Buggy World Championships. The picturesque Mediterranean city of Giardini Naxos will host this prestigious event. The selection process of the host facility is a mystery to most, and controversy usually follows this event. The topic this year was the surface, concrete laced with a thin layer of dirt. Track design does differ quite a bit around the world. U.S. tracks typically resemble a motocross track, while European tracks resemble a rally course. European tracks also feature mixed surfaces. That being said, concrete does not fall into the typical design pattern. However, the surface appears to be a hit with the racers. The track um, is a little different, but um, high traction. A lot of grip. Um, you know, the surface is, again, I think better than what most people expected. It's hard. Uh, concrete, for the most part, I think. Uh, but it's staying really consistent, so I think that's a positive. Not bad though. Just um, hoping, hoping it doesn't rain. Why? Why? You just said you wanted it to rain. I don't know. I do. You, yeah. For this track, yeah, I think it's really hard. And I think getting more uh, more difficult compared to the first day. The first day, still they have some dirt on the top, but everybody running so many times, so all the dirt is kind of gone. The track's good. It's very unique uh, for us Americans. You know, we don't normally run on asphalt, so it's tough to set your car up for asphalt and being able to jump a jump and land a jump really well. So, um, but it's a lot of fun. It's staying really consistent. Start all over again. It'll take me five days to get my hand. <laughs> Maybe we'll do another five days of practice for you. Hope so. <laughs> I'm getting there slowly but surely. Slowly, slowly, catch a monkey. It has become evident after the extended practice that tires would play a huge role in the worlds this year. Unconventional treads have become common. 
The surface is not the only controversy at this year's event. Fuel, we're all able to run what we want. We're still waiting to get word. Uh, we may have to, to pay a small fee because they had to get some extra uh, staffing to be able to control the extra volume of fuel that's here. But yeah, we're all able to run, run our own fuel. The other constant at the world year after year is the top ranked driver going into the world almost never wins. In 2008, a year that was dominated by Mike Trui, Atsushi Hara stunned the RC world by winning on fuel economy. In 2010, a year dominated by Jared Tebow, it was Cody King, another lesser known driver. Two years ago, Robert Battier came out of relative obscurity to win the hour long main event. To win this race, everything has to click. You know, everything has to come together. It can't just, not always the fastest guy wins the race. It's just always how the world's have been. It'd be good. I think anybody would be stoked to win it. Either if you want it again or if you want it for the first time. To win this race any time is it's good. Yeah, it's like a dream for everyone. Like the first dream is to win, then to repeat again, but I mean, it's so complicated. We are so many drivers who can win, so we'll try to get to get it as fast as we can, but if not, at least we are in final, so it's okay. I never have any good results for any one in the bucket because I have my, I make my clear with on you know, electric on and I think it includes myself. I think nobody think I win because we, I'm new and never raced before for an, any big event for one one in buggy. That 2008. So. Heading into the Messina Worlds, Ty Tessman is the number one ranked driver in the world. Nice to know that people like think that I'm, I'm the number one driver, but it's not like a whole bunch more pressure. Yeah, it's, I think it's it's a lot on him. I, he he hides it well, I think, but I think it's a lot of pressure. Will Ty win RC's ultimate prize, or will it go to another relatively unknown driver? Like second place finisher, uh, what's his name, from the Euros held just a few months ago. Gah! Uh, my name is Martin Boranka from Austria. Whoops, my bad. I was very, very happy. This was better, my best race, I think, in my life. And all was perfect, the car, the tire, and all was perfect. And so I can, can make the second place. Yeah. countries represented, 160 of the best racers from around the world, and a couple of pasty white fins in need of a tan. Each driver has earned their spot by way of placement in regional races around the world. the organizers here have pulled out all the stops. This actually feels like a world championship level event, not just a club race in a foreign country. Also missing this year was the typical warm-up race. Instead, practice has been extended for the entire week prior to the event. Uh, I appreciate it, the, the removal of the warm-up race because the warm-up race is uh, it's pretty costly to do and, and you know, Many times for warm-up races, we've had the conditions change from the warm-up to the actual race. Um, here, I think the, the additional time was probably a little excessive. You know, maybe maybe we could add it a day, but I I really, um, for the worlds in general, I'd like to see the schedule shorter. So um, I think I think it was too long. We've been here too long. I think these guys are ready to qualify today.
welcome, welcome to LiveRC.com's coverage of the IFMAR 8 Scale World Championships in Italy. We're here in the Team Losey Racing Broadcast Center. We're your hosts. I'm Scotty. I'm Charlie. And we are going to bring you Qualifying Day, finally. With that, qualifying begins, and the 2014 IFMAR Worlds are officially underway. Daniel Adams, ProLine's team manager, does a walkthrough getting updates from his drivers. If you do, they might have more wheel spin, they might run out of gas. Thanks. Hey, I appreciate that. I'm just going to keep fucking reminding you. The 45 you're second all, lap. You're 45 all happy second with lap. me, like, oh, good job. You see? Yeah, you because it. I thought you pit it. I was like, all right, he wised up. Got a good number out of that thing. I'm going to put his diff in backwards. And I found out he didn't pit, and I was freaking out. We're, mm. we're a little close for semis right now, but. Yeah. There's, there's a chance of some weather later on this week, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, there's an 80% chance of rain. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Ty's equipment is ready, and while he had some of the fastest 10-minute runs in practice, David Ronafalk had the fastest three consecutive laps after seating practice and is the top-seated driver. Will this rattle the young Canadian? Um, I, I didn't really pay much attention to that. I'm not sure. Do you know who went fast in practice? I bet your dad knows. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, this guy right here went, went pretty good every day so far. So what, do you have to say about what was your strategy going in? Um, just to try to get good practice in and go as fast as I could and try to kind of practice qualifying to try not to make too many mistakes but also go for a fast time but I don't know just try to get his car, our car as good as we can and try not to get lost in setup. We got a lot of stuff accomplished on our setup. And we're sitting pretty good for tomorrow, I think. Um, we didn't have the fastest seat time, but it's not a big deal. It's just seating is 10 minutes to get through tomorrow. So, um, but the car is good. We're I think we're set on tires, what we want to run, and we're pretty happy and excited for tomorrow. Also faster than Ty after seating practice was the reigning champ, Robert Battier. Will we see a repeating champion again, or will an unknown driver like Martin walk away with this one? Martin sits third overall after yesterday's practice session. It becomes very clear that being fast in seating means nothing once qualifying starts. Dakota finishing well in seating drops to the bottom of the leaderboard in the first round of qualifying. Uh, the run was a little rough. Um, it started out good and I just had a, a few mistakes um, and then the engine got really lean and I couldn't do any of the jumps or anything. Um, so it was a rough run but next round let's go out there and get a clean run and it should be top 10 hopefully. He would climb slightly in round two, but he wouldn't see a top 10 finish until round four. A long road to the A main is ahead of young Dakota, who's one of the favorites to win the title. So I'm going to be down there for, uh, for the mains, but I'll just do my best and hopefully bump up into the main. As the pressure of winning caught up to one of RC's most talented young stars. Okay, bro. Scheiße. <laughs> Jorn is also struggling. Motor flamed out in the first one and second one I had to run in the wet, so no chance. The challenging track also has other top contenders struggling, including one past champion, Cody Kang. Yeah, it's decent. It's, it's all right. It was, uh, I know that I can run with those guys and just need to eliminate the couple mistakes and I'll be right there. A lot of guys get all worked up, you know, someone's really fast, but it's the world's and anything can happen. It's always kind of crazy once the semis come around and stuff, so just kind of let the qualifying, you know, work itself out and just try and do my own qualifiers and see where I end up. Lee Martin, on the other hand, was the model of consistency. Running the newly released MBX7R, he would only finish outside the top five in one round. Well, if I can keep up the consistency, we should hopefully have a good chance. For now. With two throwout rounds, Lee is a legitimate contender to top qualify the event. <laughs> yeah, it was alright. I had a pretty good first run. Um, got a fourth, but not very far off second place. And um, that run was... It was pretty good, but I, I touched a few pipes here and there, which kind of lost me some time, but I didn't actually have a marshalling mistake, so it was all right. Another new car is really good. Um, it's definitely an improvement on the old car for the level of traction we can now achieve. And um, 
I really like it. It's much more, you know, the, the MBX7 was a huge step to me from the 6, and this one's uh, improved that further. So nice. Adam Drake is having a great week. At 36 years old, Adam is an old-timer by RC standards, but his work ethic and attention to preparation has rewarded him with a spot in the semifinal. Uh, I was able to do that. I wasn't super happy with my run in the, sem or in the last round. Uh, two just kind of careless mistakes of my own. Uh, but happy to be in the, in the semi and starting, uh, well, I'm ninth overall, so I'll be starting, I guess, fifth in the semi. So happy about that. Adam's new teammate, Ryan Mayfield, is finding great success with his new team. Ryan is in a close battle for TQ. Um, I'm better in heads up racing than I am in IFMAR because I, I know where my competitors are on the track. Um, so if I can get through the semi with a good time, good position, start you know kind of close to the front of the pack in the main uh, i know i have a good shot as long as everything goes well in the main and everything you know stays together which i'm confident in that um so i think i have a you know i have just as good a shot as any and i'm just gonna try my best and make sure the car is put together right and see how i see how i finish the pits are bustling with activity for the most part we're not sure what Team Kyoshu International is up to as they are pitting in a private container. This closed door policy isn't helping them out as their chassis is struggling on the high grip track. If I did that today, I'll my phone would fly out. just saying this track is really yeah. Yeah. The Track suits people like Lee Martin, that really, yeah, really like, super electric. Yeah, like Gary, yeah and Ty Tessman is very smooth and he, yeah. well, no, his car just doesn't look like yeah, he's rushing yeah, around. He doesn't, doesn't, Look, what he's got of his car is he can go into the corner slower because his car just accelerates yeah. so quick. Out of the corner, it just, just turns and yeah, it's like an electric car. And his motor is just like it's crisp. Super, super, super. We were saying I it's so quiet. It's so yeah, perfect. Yeah. It's the tuning is the tuning's perfect. Because <laughs> it comes out of the corner just goes meep, meep. Jared Tebow's world started out rough. Initially, he was disqualified from round one for illegally cutting holes in his body. A jury did give him his time back, but he was not to use the cutout body in subsequent qualifiers. Tebow's struggles were not limited to violations of the rule book. His car was very edgy and hard to drive. It resulted in runs that were riddled with small mistakes. Uh, yeah, it was kind of hectic there for like the first or the last, just coming out of pit lane, but it all got straightened out and. I don't know, I just tried to catch up and not make more mistakes and that's what happened. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with how I drove. It's just wasn't as clean as I like to be. No one can seem to match Ty's pace. He TQ'd the first three consecutive rounds in convincing fashion. His car setup was perfectly suited to the high grip track. He is having a picture perfect Worlds much like Mike Truey did at the 2008 Worlds in Charlotte, North Carolina. So on plan, Mr. Truey. A, a, a great run. Only one or two mistakes. Uh, seemed like your low C ride went, ran very well. Yeah, it's uh, just like I said to them, it's just like qualifying. It's three times as long. Just planning on going out there at a steady pace and uh, no mistakes. And I think that's the, uh, the key in the equation to success here. So we wish you the best of luck, your top qualifier, and now world's final uh, chance here to be the, the world champion. Good luck. Thank you. All right, Mike Churi, he's been a man so far. A uh, near-perfect 30-minute run for uh, Mr. Churi. So we'll um, I don't know if you consider it pressure. I mean, you look at it as pressure, you can look at it as confidence. You know, going in, you know, 2008, TQ of the Worlds in uh, North Carolina, and I, going to the main, I was really confident. And everything that I thought of there went as planned. I just never really, honestly, never put heart in the equation. So, I mean, he... He did what he needed to do that day, and I still think it was probably one of the most impressive drives. You know, even though it was to beat me, it's, you know, I got to give him the respect and, you know, well, well deserved win there. But, uh, yeah, I think he, I think with Ty, and especially with our program with his father and, his, you know, his mom, and they got a good program going where he's probably just riding the confidence train, and uh, it's going to be tough to beat. Ty's picture-perfect worlds came to a halt when the weather changed, for the worse. Ty is the dominant one so far. 
So, but everything is different now. So it's going to be interesting to see. Today is supposed to do this all day, and um, it's, it's going to change the, the complexity of the, the World Championships for sure. Under IFMAR rules, a round won't be stopped unless it's unsafe for the marshals to do their job. That was not the case on this day. No, I'll get that. In a desperate last-minute attempt to lock down TQ, Gordon Ty swapped out all three differentials for thinner oil to help the car on the slippery track. Let's go. Will the gamble pay off? Yeah, hopefully. Even with this new setup, his car was no match for the lucky few that had the dry track earlier in the round. Ty would finish in the 37th spot. The car was a lot better, I think, than it would have been if I had left it, yeah, for sure. But the track is pretty horrible for traction anyway. I'm feeling pretty good about it. It sucks that his, his was probably the wettest by far. I mean, it feels okay. I get the points, but still it wasn't really fair to everyone. Uh, it feels okay, but it not, it not feel like you take you to run with everyone have the same condition, so... It's a whole camera, actually. So it's a, it's a little bit muddy, but I had fun. It's just the, the times are terrible. No, I was in the mud, so I just chucked whole shots on and just try to get around pretty much. They're not going to cancel the round, so we're going to see what happens for tomorrow. Yeah, there, wasn't, there was one fast heat that got a dry track, which kind of screwed it a little bit. If, uh, if that heat wouldn't have been fast, it wouldn't really have mattered. But, um, you know, four of us had spazzy runs, so it's not the end of the world and uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Unfortunately, the weather came in and ruined it for everyone, really. Um, so, yeah, I think that one's going to be a bit of a washout. We'll have to just see what happens tomorrow now, whether it'll rain or not. It's the final day of qualifying. At 23 Celsius, it's a beautiful morning and the track has puddles on it. The track is so sensitive to just a little bit of water. Any water on the bricks and it's literally ice. So uh, yeah, it's basically for Ryan, Ty and myself going into the last round, we all have three good ones and we need a, need a fourth good one. Um, just been a little unlucky with the weather, but you know, you, you win some, you lose some. But it's not dirt. Well, that's the problem. Who's run on wet concrete for? Nobody. I should have. That's, I don't know what I was thinking. I should have. Ty would again lose the dry track lottery. Round five would be only slightly better for him. He improved his position, but only to 20th overall. Well, went out there and we changed some more stuff on a car, and it felt the same as yesterday, but obviously it was a lot slower. Um, I had one little spin around, but it wasn't. It didn't really cost me that much. It just sucks we have to run in the rain and then it dries out for everybody else but I don't know we're just gonna try to run the next run and hopefully we can make it into the semis. He could have quite possibly TQ the first three rounds and start have to start in the quarters which would really suck. He needs a good run like a, anything a top 10 even would be good. Kyle McBride was rewarded with a dry track and start, the TQ. Um, never done it before so pretty happy I mean I was lucky compared to some other guys in that round due to the track but um I'll take it. <laughs> move, it, move on from there. Round six, the final round of qualifying. For some, this is their last chance at a semi-final berth. For others, the realization that they will have to bump up from a lower semi consumes them. Two years of preparation comes down to this moment in time. The pressure mounts. One last shot at glory. Ty needs a solid run to stay out of the quarterfinals. Driver and machines become one and are once again unleashed to tempt fate.
Kai is finally rewarded with a dry track and he takes full advantage of this. Okay. He finishes second for the round behind Ryan Mayfield. The last, the last day looked pretty, it was kind of like a, it's almost like doom and gloom, but it turned out pretty good, so I'm pretty happy to get TQ and get to start off front for the semis. I don't think TQ should go straight into the main though. I think it should have to race um, for just to be fair and so you get track time too. Because everyone else gets track time, you should have the same amount. Um, so I think it's, it's more stressful, but I think it's a good thing. If we don't have a mechanical failure, I think Ty has an excellent chance to win. He's, he's got the confidence, he's got the speed, and he's just got to do his thing. Two years of hard work have been paying off for the Testaments, but will it translate into a world championship title? How long have you wanted to win the Worlds? Ever since I've started, ever since we went to the first race and saw the pros run, and I figured I wanted to do this and then be world champ someday. Finals day. Lower mains have already been run. Three quarters of the field have already been eliminated, and it shows. The pits are emptying out. Very, very good run there for Ty Tessman. He is on his game. People in the chat are here talking that yeah. it's Ty Tessman's championship to the, lose. I mean, his pro line teammate Chewy even said the same thing. This right, kind of Tessman's in control of this event right now. He's got the pace. So. Absolutely. He's definitely uh, brought his best here. The family is here. Uh, Mom and Dad are uh, working the, the guns and the pit stops and team effort for the Testaments. He's the one to beat. The format at a World Championship event is slightly different than at your typical race. The competitors are grouped into odd and even groups. Both groups will have a semifinal. The top five from each semi will earn a spot in the A main. The other two spots go by time. No one can qualify into the A main. Every spot is earned. Qualifying did not go well for Mike, Cody, or Dakota. They will have to make their way into the semifinals by way of the quarterfinals. This makes for a lot of runtime on a track that is brutal on equipment. Cody starts from the top of the quarters. Even though he is in a tight battle with local hotshot Ricardo Montero, Cody, having been in a transfer spot for the entire race, puts in a dominant run and earns his spot in the semis with a win. Dakota's quarter doesn't go quite so well. He is stuck in traffic. His parents watch nervously as he picks his way through the seemingly endless train of slower drivers. Eventually, a clean track is found. Dakota hunkers down and starts chasing down the leaders. He doesn't win the semi, but both Cody and Dakota earn transfer spots and make it out of the quarterfinals into the semis. Mike wasn't quite so lucky. Um, you know I mean, it went, it went all right. Start was good. I got a good start. Got around the initial pileup, which kind of expected there to be. Uh, 
I was up to like six or seventh here in the first minute or two, and it kind of got tangled up myself and fell back towards the back again. And you make a mistake in those freight trains, you're coming out towards the tail end of the field. But uh, caught back up in the last half, put in a strong charge, and car and tires and engines were all all good at the very end. You know, and I think it would have been a car that would go an hour, no problem, and not change. But uh, yeah, just fell just a little short. Was waiting on times there in the end, and that second heat actually had a pretty clean run the whole time, so they weren't, they weren't really doing much battle, and they were just putting in lap times and squeaked us out by a few seconds, I think it was. So, a little disappointed? Um, I mean, always disappointed when you don't make the main, but not mad about it. You know, car was good, and kind of had some ups and downs with the weekend with qualifying, and you know, really going into the, you know, the long practice, and then uh, qualifying, and then the, the semifinals today was, it was good. I was happy with it. The top 24 drivers of this unusually long event are set for the semifinals. Ty's group will be first. Being TQ, he will start from the front. This is a 30 minute race, meaning that each driver will pit at least four times. Ty gets off to a clean start, but he's in for a big surprise. Lee Martin is matching his speed. Lap after lap, the two follow each other around, nose to tail. I was in the lead, so I wasn't pushing too hard, uh, but we also ran used tires, which I don't think were quite as good as I ran in the main. I ran new ones in the main, so that was part of it, and I just wasn't driving as hard as I needed to because I was in the lead. You have to make that through the semi to get in the main, so you don't want to do anything stupid. A lot of things happen in 10 seconds in this semi. Lee Martin suffers a catastrophic mechanical failure. His worlds uh, are know, over. We were looking good, and I, I felt really comfortable. Um, and I, I can't really, you know, I don't know what else to say. We were, we were, we were there and thereabouts, and we could have probably right, contended for the win. But they didn't want me to do it this week, so we'll do it in two years. In Vegas. In Vegas. <laughs> and if we don't do it, then at least we can have a really good night out. <laughs> Ty takes the win and is headed to the Nitro World's final for the third time in his 10-year career. Ryan Mayfield leads out the B group for their semi, but before it begins, there's a bit of drama. Elliot Boots has bent a shock shaft in the warm-up. Yeah, um, not the way I want to start the semi, but luckily we've got a 10-minute break, so... The car's all done now, I'm just waiting. Drivers handle this unexpected delay differently. Jared laments for his fallen teammate, David Ronifal. Ryan remains in the zone, while Cody just does what Cody does. The buggies are refired, and it's time to find out which drivers will make the cut and which ones won't. Unlike Ty, Ryan Mayfield, who also started from pole, walked away with the win uncontested. He put down a run 10 seconds faster than Ty. Mayfield will be starting from the number one spot in the world's final. Yeah. Car was working good. Hopefully the driver can keep working good. And, uh, almost done for another world. So hopefully we can end on a high note. The guy who deserves to win, that's who's gonna win. Uh, Taysman. Taysman. Tessman, Mayfield, or Robert Battle? I, I really don't want to say something because, you know, they're all my friends. I think it's going to be a race between Mayfield and Ty. I really do. But I want to say it's going to be a two horses race uh, Mayfield and Ty. Taysman. Race for second will be pretty good this year. This is it. The field is set. Like Chewy in 2008, these have been Ty's worlds to lose. He has been the dominant driver all season long. Ryan Mayfield took pole and looked strong in the semis. Could he be our next world champ? Mr. DJ. Is there a dark horse in this group? Or will Ty play closer and walk away with RC's ultimate prize? The bleachers are packed, fuel guns are full, buggies are ready, it's go time.
I was in second, so I didn't want to jump on top of Mayfield because he was going to do single single. So I was trying to go tight and do single single, and I went a little too tight and got hung up on the pipe and then rode it all the way to the next corner and finally got back on. Not at all the start Ty wanted. Five seconds into the race and Ty is nearly dead last. I knew we had an hour to run and just had to keep doing laps. I knew everybody was crashing, so as long as I didn't crash, I'd catch up. So I just tried to keep telling myself that and keep praying. Even though the audience let out a collective gasp, Gord knows it's a long main. And more importantly, he knows his son. He, he just doesn't quit. That's what he does. He just doesn't quit. Ty is not the only one who didn't get the start he wanted. Cody King got pinched off right at the start and broke an arm after hitting pit lane. I don't really know how to explain that. <laughs> kind of just bad luck, I guess. Just kind of, I got a jump on someone on the start and they didn't like that very much, I guess, and kind of pinched me off a little bit into the pit lane and that's all she wrote. I was out for the first five, six minutes. I was really disappointed once they put my car down too because my car was awesome. Everything was super good, so. But it's just the way it goes, I guess. Vegas, baby. Yep, 2016, here we come. Ty is embedded deep in the 12 car field. Ryan Mayfield is checking out and enjoys an 11 second lead. That is until he suffers an unforced error. He is lucky that his car drove away from the crash. He nearly suffered the same fate as Cody King. Nevertheless, this error allowed Ryan's lead to erode. The pack, including Ty, has caught up to him. It's time for the first cycle of pit stops. Ty comes in first. Gordon Land get Ty topped off in what seems to be the fastest pit stop anyone has ever seen. Ryan Mayfield. It was kind of hectic in a little bit, like in the, the last couple guys, just because it was kind of everybody's racing hard and bumping and grinding and. I got fairly clean through that, didn't really get tangled with anybody. Ty has caught the leaders. He makes what just might be the ugliest pass for the lead in the history of RC. It was kind of hectic. I jumped into the imp on the grass and hopped back on and made hit that thing. That was kind of like a hang on moment. Regardless, he's on point now with clean track ahead of him. Just a few laps later and Ryan is in the pits again. He is done. His steering servo has failed and his worlds are over. It sucked that he broke, but it was kind of a, a relief a bit. It just kind of like a, a little bit of weight off your shoulders that you're not being pressured the whole time. But it's, I don't like to win that way, but I'll take it. As the race continues, attrition takes out another contender. Robert Battier runs out of fuel. His chance to repeat this year is gone. 40 fuel mileage, so we decided to go 7.30 to be safety. But unlucky, we got run out of fuel like one meter from the line, so, but like next time for sure, we will work hard. I'm filming him now, because I think he won the race. The clock ticks down, but not nearly fast enough for Leanne. It's a long six minutes. Long. Ty focuses on putting in clean laps and not making any mistakes. Yeah, it was kind of just maybe take everything a little wider, try not to flip over anything unnecessary. He keeps it clean and finishes two laps up on second place. He is the world champion for the first time in his career. You are the best! You are the world's best! You are the world champion. Oh, dude, let's see. It feels so good. 
you had a dominating run. Three TQs, the weather came, it hurt you. You had to struggle through it, you got it in round six, you had challenge here in the semis, you had a terrible start there getting hung up, but you didn't give up, you put your head down, you reeled him in, and a dominating run. Thank you. Yeah, we've had a really tough week. It's been a long week and a lot of rain and stuff's been happening, but it all worked out in the end and I couldn't have done it with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Definitely, definitely. And mom and dad down there in the pits, cheering you. Disappointment in Thailand and Argentina are forgotten in an instant, as Thai's dream to become a world champion has become a reality. With this win, Thai has reached the pinnacle of professional RC racing, and he's just 21 years old. While the Messina Worlds will always have a special place in Thai's heart, these worlds will not be remembered fondly by all. Yeah, maximum disappoint disappointed. Important thing. I leave here feeling like you left it all on the table and the car was, engine tires were all good. I think I did that. It was a sure thing all the time. I don't think any of us would do it. So just uh, lick my wounds. I know I have the speed with a new car and a new team. Been the fastest guy where I've been so far, so I'll just uh, try again. Well, yeah, it's Vegas. Better place to win, I think. So, uh, two years prep and then I'll be back to win. I don't know if it's even sunk in yet, but I'm just so happy for Ty. I know how bad he wanted this and how hard he's worked. and I'm just thrilled for him. I got nothing else to say. <laughs> kind of mission accomplished. I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, we started uh, back in Thailand with Thai and, you know, we uh, probably just, he had some growing to do and, and uh, we all worked together and we worked on the product. He's obviously, his package is, is world class and, uh, you know, came up a little short in Argentina, but we get here and uh, from start to finish, he pretty much owned the race. Um, it feels pretty good. It's, it's kind of still surreal for me, just because it's, I don't know, it's, I kind of race the same people a couple times a year, so it's, it's kind of hard to actually think of it as a world championship. Um, but it still feels cool not to achieve one of my goals, and I think pretty much everybody's goal to win the Worlds. <laughs> Little bugger did good. Feels good, don't it? First lap. He was in dead I last. Know, I was watching. No, I was in dead last. Cause I was broken. Okay. Oh. <laughs> but I, we went around that corner and I looked and I just put my head down yeah. and started praying. And I thought, why, why, why? Yeah. And he agreed to not do the double because Mayfield wasn't, and we didn't want to ruin him, right? And he just missed. Just clearly missed. Good. So finally. You got a yeah. title? Yeah. What do you feel? I don't know. I just. Good to you. I don't know. No word. Yeah. Same as me. Yeah. First time ever. Yeah. When you get the the, the title, mm -hmm. you have no words. Just. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is the start, I think. Yeah. Stop it! For Ty, the road to Vegas and the 2016 Worlds begins now. You're all up in my grill today, huh? Is the red light on? Red light on, Chewie. Red light sneaking. Chewbacca? Yes. No raisin today. Yeah, one more day. Had enough of pasta. Can actually use some McDonald's. <laughs> Look at it, look at it! Where are you from?
Not at all the start Ty wanted. Five, no, oh my lord. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's try, try that again. <laughs> 